Hi guys, Steph here. What we got for you today? Can you tell what it is? <laughs> what we've got for you here? Yes, a Parker. But which one is it? Can you tell? Well, the people that watch my videos on a regular basis may actually look at the pen and say, yes, we've seen this one before, because yes, I've actually reviewed this pen before. I'll leave you a link to the top uh, so you can go and have a look at it. But what we've got for you here is a superb, handsome, classic Parker Maxima Dufold fountain pen. Now, the pen was made in England and Parker Dufold pens were from sort of early 1950s through to sort of round about the early 1960s. Now the Parker Maxima Dufold was quite simply the biggest, the best, the flagship fountain pen within the Dufold range of that period. Now this pen, nice and simply, we're dating from 1956. But as I said, this Maxima Dufold, it was the, if you like, the top of the range within the Dufold fountain pen range of the period. As you can see, comes in this beautiful classic black. Although I say it's classic black, they did bring out a sort of red burgundy colour, I believe a blue, and maybe even a green coloured one as well but either way a superb classic quality made fountain pen I've restored this pen as I say it's from 1956 whoever actually is lucky enough to own this pen afterwards will quite simply get another 50 plus years from this beautiful classic fountain pen but, as I say, it's a Parker Maxima Dufold from 1956, classic black. The size of the pen, from the top of the cap to the end of the barrel, it's a lovely 143mm capped. Around the barrel, it's a lovely, chunky 12mm in diameter. So, as you can see, it's quite a large fountain pen. A lovely sized fountain pen again for me personally I've said it before I quite like uh, sort of oversized pens because quite simply I've got quite large hands and this is a beautiful excellent size comes with gold filled trim you'll see to the bottom of the cap there we've got the very classic chevron patterned um, cap cap band to the very top of the cap doesn't need any introduction the very recognizable Parker arrow clip there's a sideways view and if we take you up to the to the top of the cap it comes with a nice matching black cap jewel to the top of the cap absolutely gorgeous let's have a look at the the barrel imprint. Now the barrel imprint is a little bit on the worn side, although it's still still quite legible. Um, but let's uh, let's bring it nice and close. It's got Parker uh, Maxima Dufold, or is it Dufold Maxima? And then underneath, made in England. So there you can see the the barrel imprint. Let's give you a slightly different angle. And also, sorry, one thing I actually missed, and again, let's keep it nice and still. I'm hoping you can see to the very right-hand side, there's a number six. So nice and simply, we've got a number six to the end of the barrel, which is indicating at this point that the pen is from 1956. So we can date it quite specifically. As I said, superb pen. I love these Parker Dufold Maximas. They're absolutely superb. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's unscrew the cap for you. Let's give you the customary 
twirl of the pen, show you all different angles, you can see it's lovely and clean. It was a little bit tired when it came into me, but we've, well, we've done the work on it and it's come out absolutely superb. So let's take you up to the section. The section is slightly tapered towards the nib, it's, it's quite a long section. Um, nice and comfortable and the main thing is it's a lovely as I say a lovely large size pen very comfortable for me to actually hold so let's go back to the section there we have it and let's show you the nib the beautiful thing about the Parker Maxima fountain pens is the nib look at that they actually have a large nib on these pens and well again why not if it's actually the flagship sort of fountain pen from the period why not highlight it with this gorgeous large nib you'll see it's what we term as an arrow um, arrow nib you can see the arrow to the top there now underneath you'll see it says 14 carat Parker England and then underneath it's got the correct number 50 on the nib. So it's the correct number 50 nib for the Parker Maxima fountain pen. Let's show you a sideways view. Let's take you underneath there to show you the, the feed underneath. As you can see, everything has been cleaned and it's in lovely condition. You can see it's got the very recognisable sort of traditional, what we term as a comb feed underneath. Let's pop back to the nib and just give you a little bit of information. Sometimes you'll find on these pens that the uh, the number 50 is actually to the left of the nib and to the right there's normally one single digit number which in some cases indicates again the date of the pen. Now what you can't see on this nib because once I actually pop, popped it back in the section to the very bottom of this nib it has RU 1956. Now, again, that is indicating the pen is dated 1956. So, because you can't see it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop a picture up onto the screen. So, there you have it. That's the nib there. And I don't know if, well, my photography needs to be improved. I'm working on that. But you'll see to the bottom, RU 1956. As you can see, it's a large nib. So what I'll do, let me show you another photograph. There we go. And what you can see is the Parker Maxima nib to the center. To the left of the Parker nib is a Swan Eternal number no. four nib, which is generally a large nib as well. And to the right of the Parker nib, you'll see a Conway Stewart Joro nib. Now the Joro nibs within the Conway Stewart range were generally one of the biggest pen, uh, sorry not the biggest pens, the biggest nibs within the Conway Stewart pen range. So it's a, you know, a large Joro nib supposedly. But as you can see in the middle, look how big that nib is. Absolutely magnificent. A beauty. So, there we go. So back to the pen. As we said, we've talked about the nib. Now, the, the Parker Maximas, if we unscrew the, bar, the, the barrel for you, there you go. You can see it's what we term as an aerometric filler, okay, which were sort of designed and based on the Parker 51s after they did the what we term as the button fillers. But uh, on this period at the end, they used this... <coughs> excuse me, this aerometric type filler and to the bar, not to the barrel top, to the the protective case in there you'll see it says Parker and if we turn it through like so you'll see it gives us the instructions on how to fill the pen and I think right at the bottom somewhere it says made in England. So we've got this stainless steel what we term as a sack protector and to fill the pen we dip it in the ink and what we do we press numerous times on the bar here which depresses the sack and fills the pen with ink 
Yes, I know. I can hear you already. Let's bring on some ink. Uh, let's dip the nib in the ink. And I'll be quiet and we should hear some sort of gushing and bubbling going on. There we go. And I'm sure you could hear that. That's precisely what we like to hear. That gush, 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 gushing sound, which is telling us everything is hunky dory. And yeah, let's show you the the sack. Although the sack on this, I've cleaned everything. It's nice and clean, uh, considering the age of the pen. And I'm hoping you can actually see there. We can now see the ink in the sack. So let's pop the let's pop this sack. Sorry, not the sack the barrel back on got a little bit of ink on our fingers never mind and as always it's first time it's been tested since I've restored it so we keep our fingers crossed and let's see how this gorgeous large nib writes so what we have is a a Parker Maxima do fold again made made in England and it was made in England because you've seen it we've shown it to you it was made in England in 1956 um, made well the color of the pen is classic black now with a large nib like this they're not renowned for having any flex so as you can see it's writing with a quite well yeah you know it's a stiff nib it's no flexibility in the nib and it's writing as you can see with a fine fine line let's do some figures of eights it's writing very nicely and even with some pressure on the downward stroke no we're not we're not getting any sort of line variation as i say it's writing nicely and it's writing as you can see with a lovely fine line lovely jubbly so let's pop the cap back on we'll flush the pen out we'll clean it with water and make it ready for well we'll try and find a new owner for it because somebody will enjoy this beautiful classic pen and will enjoy it for many 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 years to come an absolutely beautiful everyday sturdy quality made fountain pen so, I hope you enjoyed looking at the pen as much as I enjoy showing them to you people. Don't forget, leave a comment, don't be shy. And if you haven't subscribed, then get it done now. Subscribe! And if you possibly can, why not support my work? But for now, I'll just say, bye-bye for now.